everybody. My name is Winnie Marion, and this is Simon Says, the weekly CAD podcast of Bard College at Simon's Rock. And I am a current student of Bard College at Simon's Rock, and I can't tell you how many times I've tried explaining what that is to people. I get so many blank looks and so many, wait, repeat that? And all my family members, they practically, none of them understand what's going on. So I'm going to explain it today. And if you're a current student, maybe you can send this to a loved one, friend, neighbor, an enemy, whatever you want to explain it to them. Maybe if you know somebody who goes to Spire College at Simon's Rock, you could refresh yourself on what it is, you know, lots of purposes. Just I'm going to explain what our college is to whoever doesn't know or wants to know more. I've been here for quite a while and it's like a process. It's a whole process of getting to understand what it is, even as a student, because that's just how it goes. It is such a unique situation and people are still kind of finding out how that fits in and it changes depending on how other colleges view us or how things regarding admissions or the campus changes. So you know, I'm going to try to explain the best I can. And it's it's reasonable that you or whoever you're sending this to doesn't understand what Simon's Rock is because when you look it up online, the first thing it's raked in is uniqueness or creativity or whatever that section is in the college ranking system. I don't really know what uniqueness means, but I guess here it's that it's the only early college that exists where students go to college before they finish high school or younger than they were supposed to finish high school or like where they're just not seen as ready for college from the outside perspective. I have classmates that are older than 17 and I have classmates that are younger and the thing that brings them together is that they wouldn't be going to college regardless unless maybe it's an international student who thinks that the presentation of Simon's Rock is a little bit more palatable than the larger American culture. But I'm going to go back to the beginning because the first thing I'm going to tell you is that Bard College at Simon's Rock is a college. So the person that whoever you know who goes there, they are a college student unless they're in the academy, which is something different and very complicated. And I can explain that a different time. But for our purposes here, whoever you know who's in the college is a college student. It's not a pre-college. It's not some program that leads up to college. They're taking real college credits and have a real college GPA and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that's kind of the first thing that everybody is very confused about because, you know, it doesn't make sense. I don't have a high school diploma. I do have a high set, which is like a GED equivalent for high school. And I'll explain that too. But I don't have a high school diploma and yet I've finished more than a year and a half of college. So that's kind of the difficult thing to fathom, I think, for a lot of people because in America, the college system is set in such a specific way where you have so many standardized tests and the standardized common application for everybody. And those are also specifically standardized that it's hard to fathom the breaking out of it or how that even works. A lot of questions I get are, well, if all you did was take a high set, why doesn't everybody just do that? And that's a fair question. I think that for most parts, I think not everybody knows about Simon's Rock because like I said, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere with a student body of 400. It's really small. So you have about 200 kids in the first class in your freshman year, but they don't call it freshmen, they call it first years. In your first year, you'll have about 200 students in your class and then in the latter two the latter three years you have 300 of the student body and then the other half of it is made up by the last three years so a lot of people leave after year two and transfer so it's it's really understandable that you haven't heard of it that anybody hasn't heard of it no one understands because it's very small they have a pretty large acceptance rate so the only way that i can gather that people don't really apply or don't really get in is often that they just they don't know about it i've met a lot of people 
who have heard of Simon's Rock but didn't apply for whatever reason. I think uh, not a lot of people are willing to jump into the deep end unless they have problems with whatever their current system is, be that high school or like the town where they live or the extracurricular activities or anything back home. If Great Barrington, Massachusetts isn't your home. So that sets up like the standard. I think not a lot of people do it because not a lot of people want to go for something that's less traditional because it does offer a lot of problems in general for transferring for uh, your credit system, for people's understanding, like me explaining this to you today, that's, you know, one more one more obstacle that people are facing is the general populace doesn't understand what they're doing, so they have to explain it to you a million times. I think in general, people aren't willing to leave unless they have a reason to leave. So that could be whatever. I know a lot of students who maybe got held back a year and want to get ahead because they're going to college two years early, or maybe they didn't have something in their old school, or they didn't like their hometown public schooling system, or something along those lines, or there's just a setback in their educational system in some way or another that causes them to want to move forward, or maybe they're just really passionate about something and are very impatient, which I think (laughs) happens a lot. So that's why people go in the first place and why people don't know about it and why it's not that everybody and why everybody doesn't do it because it's it's a lot. It's a lot of work and so you're usually about 16 in your first class and there are people who are older but for a majority of the time you're going as a 16-year-old with other 16-year-olds. Maybe they're 15, maybe they're 17, 18, you know starting out for whatever reason. They haven't finished high school, though. So that's what makes you a Bard College at Simons Rock student, like eligible to be a Bard College at Simons Rock student. It's because you haven't finished high school. So all the people in your class, you're not going to school with other college students. That's a question I get a lot because they wonder about how that campus gets divided. And I mean, yeah, because that's important, too, because there's a lot of other colleges who won't allow anyone under 18 in their dorms for legal reasons, repercussions, regardless of that. But since it's generally an early college, there's not so much of an issue there for Bard College at Simons Rock. And and the class sizes are pretty small. Like I said, if you're a freshman, you have a class size of like 200 and then gets even smaller in the second year, in your sophomore year, and way, way smaller after that. After sophomore year, as a college student, you can get your associate's degree, which means two years of college. And a lot of people use their associate's degree as a solidified amount of credits to transfer. So if you're at Bard College at Simons Rock, it's because you didn't finish high school. And that means that it's more difficult to have your college credits count for something. Because if you think about it, maybe you went to a program that was like a summer away in high school where you took college classes, something along those lines, but they don't really apply so much until you finish high school and then they're balanced on top of your high school diploma as students. But since we as students do not have a high school diploma to balance that off of, we have to get this other degree in order to transfer. Other times you can get your high set or GED. I think a lot of people don't tell you that you should beforehand because a lot of colleges for transfer need that regardless of whether or not you have your associate's degree. And a lot of colleges for transfer won't accept any credits before you got your GED or high set. So that's a thing to look out for for transferring. Regardless, after two years of college, there is usually a solidified degree that allows you to transfer other places. And, you know, a lot of people do transfer because it's small and there are only so many opportunities that you can get on such a small campus. And I think that's the main reason for transferring and wanting a more traditional college experience. Sometimes I think that people don't transfer because they think that those opportunities fit their needs well enough and people don't have to transfer. 
It's a four-year degree earning institution, so you can get your bachelor's and you can get your associate's degree there, or you can just get your associate's degree and transfer. About 50% of students stay, 50% of students transfer. The students who stay, their mindset is more on these opportunities that Bard College at Simons Rock offers, which are specific and small, fit and adhere to my needs, or there's, there's an incentive to stay. Maybe the student really likes small college life. Maybe they don't want a larger institution. Maybe they value the smaller classroom or the 400 students. And the final kind of thing that goes along with all of that is that you get a specified attention, especially for your thesis. They kind of, they let thesis students at Bar College at Simons Rock do whatever. There's tons of crazy thesis proposals, thesis ideas that are followed through on that people don't bat a second eye at, but it's people's passions and whether they're quirky or absurd is not really, that isn't really a setback for anyone who's any professor at Simons Rock. It's more that they're there to help the student focus that and turn that into a thesis. And I think that a lot of people like that program versus another college where it might be more solidified rules or you might be pigeonholed into something that is your specific thesis. Speaking of which, a lot of students stay at Simons Rock because they have a really particular interest in a certain field that isn't really a major other places, so they can create their own major and work with a professor one-on-one. -on -one. That being said, still, I think a lot of people transfer because there's times when those opportunities don't equal the ones that you could get other places because sometimes larger programs have better facilities and opportunities that you can put forth. And the transfer process kind of works pretty simply, not simply at all, not at all, is that you find online kind of, or in person, or through brochures or however you do, you find a college that fits the way that you've gone through this experience. And by that, I mean, do you have your high school equivalency? What are you looking for that's not at Simon's Rock? A lot of times it has to do with whether or not they need your high school grades in transcripts or have standardized tests. I know some Bard College at Simon's Rock students who have taken the SATs in order to transfer to other schools. But sometimes that puts a lot of pressure and a lot of time. And I think a big selling point for Bard College at Simons Rock and a lot of the philosophy is that you don't have to waste the last two years of your high school experience on taking these standardized tests and filling out these applications, which aren't that all beneficial to you as a person. And so this philosophy is kind of centered to help students fast track their lives so that they don't get bogged down by institutions and the bureaucracy of those things. It allows students to free up their time to pursue what they want to pursue. And that's uh, important to a lot of people and that's the philosophy behind it. I think, you know, Bard has a lot of specific educational philosophies that are out there and interesting kind of new agey, I guess, is like the, the word that I can think of. But I know that a lot of people see the Bard philosophy in a certain way. And I think that's true for sure. It's very artistically focused and it's got a kind of creative, free thinking outlook. And obviously, I don't know what Simon's Rock was like before it was a part of Bard College because it was the 70s. But I <laughs> do think that it's probably changed a lot and I know from our introductory speeches and procedures and everything that a lot of the ways that we're taught at college are based off of or required by BARD. Uh, for one, we have a writing and thinking workshop at the beginning of the year where we're taught to focus free write and to do things like that which are specific and kind of odd procedures for writing down your thoughts and um, the way that your brain works and I think the entire philosophy behind that is you know you write to be able to think and you think by writing and it's kind of like mirroring the, it's kind of meshing the two and not dividing them where you think and write or you write and then you think about it or something along those lines so yeah, so Simon's Rock was started in 1966, which has been a long time. It's longer than most people expect. It's longer than I expected when I first heard about that. 
but it was later combined with Bard College because I think they had financial troubles. I think it's still the same thing where it's it's an out there model that people don't really expect and people aren't super willing to commit themselves to. But along with that, they got all of the resources related to Bard College and Bard College system. Bard College does have a few other early college type things, which you call like BSEX, and it's the high school. You do the high school experience while taking college credits so when you come out of that you are a college student but you also have a high school degree it's i think more for disenfranchised youths in urban areas i know they have one in baltimore and one in new york city i'm not sure about the others but what makes simon's rock different from those things is that you're not taking high school classes either you're just taking college classes and so you're a full-time college student and a lot of the b sex, none of them live on campus. It's not like a boarding institution versus Bard College at Simons Rock. It's in the mountains in Massachusetts, which is another reason why you probably haven't heard of it. It's small and it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but Great Barrington, Massachusetts, which is in the Berkshires, the campus is a campus. It's a college campus like any other. It's very small. It has a few buildings and that's kind of it. A few fields randomly. Uh, sets to a lake which is pretty nice you have a swing set but it's in the middle of the mountains and it's a little desolate you have to drive up for a while to get there and you have to drive for a while to get there so you don't see it you don't really hear about it but that's why it's different from the other programs and why it's different from big bard which is what we call Bard College, um, the Bard College, Bard College, it's Big Bard, and it's that's in Annandale, New York. So that's about an hour away from our campus, and it's much larger, uh, much older. They have a lot more fields of agriculture, a lot more just kind of uh, historic buildings, I think. They're, they look historic, they're pretty, but ours are newer because it was the 60s, it wasn't the, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> it, it was the 60s, it wasn't some old era, and so that's the difference between the two institutions. I know that there are some kind of, I don't think there are many philosophical differences. I think there's more philosophy that's integrated into the Simon's Rock system because Simon's Rock is so specifically unique in all that it's trying to do. So there's that, but <laughs> besides that, I think Bard College is focused on having that sort of that sort of openness and uh, free thinking that allows them to have such an institution like Simon's Rock. And I'm pretty sure that's the idea that connects them. So, okay, who are, who are famous people who have been to Simon's Rock? I think that's a question a lot. You hear all the time uh, about the Coen brothers, uh, the film directors, and about Alison Bechdel, who wrote Fun Home. It's a comic book that got turned into a musical. And then uh, Ronan Farrow, who's the journalist that you know about. <laughs> but those are kind of the main three. And I'm not sure actually about whether each of them transferred, but I think, I know Alison Bechdel did, but those are kind of the three that you hear of as far as like notable alumni goes. Yeah. So in summary, Simon's Rock is a college it's for students who haven't finished high school, who are going to college, and they take real college classes. Then sometimes they transfer, sometimes they don't. There's reasons why, reasons not. Every student is kind of individual, and I think that's what's the main thing that makes it difficult to understand is that there's so many reasons for being there and all of them are different. And there's so many reasons for leaving or staying or whatever you're gonna do. They're all just, they're different because every person who goes there, they're unique and they have a unique educational path because that's the what they've chosen to do. And it's kind of an odd thing to do is to just decide to leave wherever you are and go to college for just miss two years of high school that everybody expects of you. So, you know, it's they all have a very different path than what is normal or expected in modern day American society. And that's why it's difficult to understand is because everybody is very different and everybody, you can't make blanket statements like I'm trying to do here. You, everything is so different. And there's a lot of themes 
there's a lot of different students who do different things in a similar way to other ones, but in general, the, everything is specified. So, yeah, I mean, Bard College at Simon's Rock is a college, and it's for youngsters, and they're unique, but, you know, sometimes they got to get out of there, and that's how that process works. If you have any questions, I am free for emails or comments on this page. Uh, you can email weeklycad at gmail.com and we answer things. If you want to go to our website, it's uh, weeklycad.com. It's pretty simple. So I hope to see you there. We put out articles every week and hopefully this podcast will uh, continue. I'm trying. And thank you for listening in. Send this to anybody who needs this information. If you're a student and there's anything I missed, please let me know. And I will, and I will put it as an amendment to our transcript or um, as a note in our page. So let me know. And the transcript of this is online on our website. Check it out. Have a nice night. Have a nice evening. Have a nice day. Have a nice week. Have a nice weekly cat. Yep, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. <laughs>